One quick word here about the 98 to 2002 Mazda 626 four cylinder, two liter engine, timing belt, and timing belt tensioner. When you go to put a new timing belt on this engine, there are two wheels. One of them is an idler. Right there, that bolt holds it solid to the block. It doesn't pivot or anything. And the tensioner wheel that holds tension on the belt is down on the other side towards the rear of the car. Get some better light here. Right there. That one pivots. That's the one that holds tension on the belt. Most cars with a timing belt, you tension the belt with that wheel. You put pressure against the belt and then you tighten that center bolt and it holds it solid against the block and the wheel cannot move side to side. It cannot pivot anymore. It just rolls on its roller bearing and it holds constant tension on the belt. Unfortunately, this car, the tensioner wheel can still pivot even when that center bolt is all the way tight. The only thing that holds tension against the belt is this little spring here. Whoops. Need better lighting. Let's see what I can do. So there's one end of the spring. It clips through a metal tab on the back side of the tensioner wheel. and then it clips to this stud or pin coming out of the block right here. There's a little groove in it that the spring nests in. And just the tension of that spring is the only thing holding tension on the timing belt. It seems really hokey to me, but that is the design. It seems hokey to me because at certain engine rotations you will be able to feel slop like this between the cam sprockets. It doesn't make me feel really comfortable but that's just the way it is. You cannot lock that center bolt down on the tensioner wheel. The timing marks, you can find these on lots of other, this information on lots of other videos and sources, but when you go to set it up, if you put a new timing belt on it, on top, top dead center on the crankshaft, you want the intake cam, this little groove here, whoops. These cam sprockets are universal, so they will have an I and an E with a corresponding mark there. But on the intake camshaft towards the rear of the car, you only want to pay attention to the I and its little groove right there on the edge of the sprocket. Right there. It should be parallel with the top surface of the head, not the valve cover, but the top machine surface on the head. And it should point to the slot coming off from the E on the exhaust cam, which is at the front of the car. 
so they should be pointing directly towards each other. They should be flush with the machine surface on top of the head with the valve cover off. By the way, you have to pull the valve cover off to get to the timing belt on this engine. And then one more thing, a look at the crankshaft timing mark. Right there, there's a little cast pointer behind the sprocket and the sprocket has a little half round shape cut out. Those two should be lined up. And then these two marks pointing horizontal to the ground perfectly towards each other like I explained.